Hello, this is a video demonstration of how to administer the Samsung SVMI internal in-skin voicemail system. And before we get into how to administer via terminal, um, let me just mention that there are a number of frequently um, used administration functions that are done easily via the telephone. And those are things such as editing or recording system prompts, adding, deleting, and editing users, including resetting their passwords, and changing the system answering mode. There are instructions for doing all these things at the Telephone Warehouse re website under FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, and Samsung SVMI voicemail systems. And now things such as recording the uh, system prompts or greetings, and um, resetting users' security codes, uh, adding, deleting users, uh, changing the answering mode, things like that. Those are all in these frequently asked questions. But if the things that you're looking to do cannot be done over telephone, via telephone, then you'll need to uh, administer the system via the terminal access. Uh, this system uses uh, any sort of a terminal emulation program. We're going to use HyperTerminal. Uh, that's a standard program that's included with Windows XP. If you have uh, Windows Vista or Windows 7, you'll have to install uh, HyperTerminal or some other uh, communications program because uh, it's no longer included. But in XP it is, so I'm going to go to uh, Accessories, Communications, and HyperTerminal. Now this is the first time that I'm connecting, so I'm going to create a new uh, connection profile. I'm going to name it Voicemail. And um, now there's two pieces of information that I will have needed before I got started here. One is the IP address of the system, and the other one is uh, the password. So I have my IP address. I'm going to select uh, Connect Using IP, and I put in the IP address of my system. And as soon as I click OK, it's going to connect me. Now I'm connected. I haven't logged in yet. Uh, and before I do that, there's one other setting that I need to change, and you should do the same. Go to File, Properties, Settings, ASCII Setup, and turn off Line Wrap right there. Everything else is OK. Click OK, click OK. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my um, profile, my communications profile, so that in the future I can just go to this profile that I've created called uh, Voicemail. OK? So now I am connected to the system here. I'm going to press Escape. That will allow me to log in. And here's where I need that password. And all of our customers' passwords are different, so you'll need to contact Telephone Warehouse to find out what your password is if you don't know. And at this point, I'm at the uh, main menu of the voicemail system. Uh, there are a couple of these uh, features that are um, used more frequently than others. And we'll talk about those in just a second. But let me give you an overview of some special keystrokes that are needed with this terminal emulation. Because it is terminal emulation, um, some of our functions and mouse uh, movement, etc., doesn't work. So at any point that you want to see what these special keystrokes are, just press F1. And it will show us that uh, Control E is to uh, save and exit. Um, you know, Control U, Control D are page up, page down. Uh, control t, uh, t, Control B, uh, top, bottom of lists. You'll you'll see where these are useful. But at any time you're not sure what these uh, function keys are, just press F1. One other, and also it says here Control D for more, or the next screen. So there's a couple of other options that are available. Now one keystroke that is not shown uh, on this page, but it's kind of important, is Control L. Control L will redraw a screen. I've noticed that sometimes due to communication errors or something like that, I'll get some garbage on my screen and I'll do a control L and that basically just redraws whatever screen I'm on. So that's an important one as well. Okay. Um, once again, there are two main areas that uh, you'll go into. One is the subscriber list. Pretty much everyone is in group one in all cases. And here I can go through and I can see all of the subscribers, subscribers being extension or mailbox users, in my system. And if I want to jump to a particular letter, I can press that letter. Like if I press R, it takes me straight down to the R's here. And uh, if I wanted to make a change on one of these, like this one, I can type in my name. And, oh, I've got a duplicate. 
So we've got to be careful on some of these that we don't have duplications. I just pressed enter to edit and then I press up or down arrow to go to the next one. Okay, so the subscriber list is where you can change names and this will also, on new systems, this will update the name on the phone as well. They are synchronized. Um, when I've done here, I can do a control E to exit and get out of this. If I wanted to add a user, I could do a control B to go to the bottom of the list and then at the blank here, I could press enter and put in, um, you know, a uh, user and put in their information. Oh, duplicated that one. Sorry. I forgot what Jason's extension is. But uh, anyway, if I had the correct information, I could, uh, I could put a new user in the system just right there. Control E to exit. <coughs> Another area that uh, is frequently used, but this one you need to use extreme caution in, is the open block table. This is really the nuts and bolts of the system. When I go into open block table, it um, shows me you know, all the different components of the systems. Uh, one that's used frequently is the extension or mailbox. Now, the difference between an extension and a mailbox, an extension is the, is the component in the system that performs a transfer to an extension, to an auto attendant. The mailbox is the component that controls taking messages. Normally there are both, but if you've got an extension that you don't want to take messages, like a conference room, it may have an extension block, but no mailbox. If you've got a user who's out of the office, has a mailbox, but doesn't actually have a phone, they may have a mailbox, but no extension but most users will have both. So if I go into extensions here and I pull up a, uh, a user, you'll notice that uh, there is both the uh, extension and a mailbox. They are linked together. And uh, if I want to, I can actually reset the, uh, their password from this screen, but once again, I could do that over the phone. And I can go through and I can edit the various functions of uh, their mailbox. Once again, if you don't know exactly what you're doing in here, use extreme caution contact telephone warehouse. Um, so that is the uh, open block function. Another one that is uh, frequently used is the menu. This is where we uh, determine where the different digits go and which prompts are played whenever a caller comes uh, calls in. On the second page here I did a control D for a page down. And the second page here it just shows basically where all the different options go. If someone calls in and they press option 2, that's going to the sales department. And these are various uh, various options that are available to callers. So that's the uh, very quick overview of open block. Again, very powerful, but also very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, so be careful. Um, one area in open block that uh, people may go to option, uh, often is uh, for eFax. If I open up a mailbox, uh, e-faxes are basically just another kind of mailbox, and you'll notice on page four here, I did control D a few times for page down. This is where the actual delivery uh, mailbox is determined. And uh, there are a number of other settings on this mailbox uh, that are used and if you want to create a new effects, if you're ex uh, editing an existing effects mailbox, just open it up. Basically what you're going to be doing, oops, I screwed up, I press control E. Let's go to mailbox, effects, control D. So if I just wanted to change the email address, I would just go right here and that's easy. If you wanted to create a new effects user, here's the best way to do it. Open up an existing effects user like this and then do a control A. I'm going to press F1 now to show you that control A means save as. It's basically a way to make a copy. So I take this existing one, control A, and now I name it what I want, effects test. And let's give it uh, a number. And so now I've got this new effects mailbox that I created and it's got all the proper parameters because I copied it from another effects mailbox. All I need to do is go to this page and change the email address that that goes to. Now, obviously, the phone number itself, the DID number that's pointed to this eFax mailbox, will have had to have been configured in the phone system to route that call to voicemail, but this will handle 
uh, making sure that those calls are handled as a fax mailbox rather than a regular mailbox. So if you just do a copy as, or save as, making a copy of an existing mailbox and then change the email address, that is the proper way to create a new eFax user. So now I'm just going to do a control E to exit out and again back to the main menu. Um, the other items that are here, the schedule table is where you'll put your holidays in. So if you want to edit your own holidays, that's basically where those are. Just go in and plug in your, uh, your different dates. If I just press enter, I can you know, go over and, and change whatever I want there. Okay. I'm going to do a control E to exit out of this. Um, System-wide parameters you should probably never go into. Voice Studio is kind of a cool tool. It's um, it's a way for you to um, edit and manage the prompts of the system um, from a screen, you know, uh, visually, rather than just over the phone. And if you want, you can actually even record the scripts, as we can see that uh, we've done right here. Okay, that's what uh, Prompt Studio does. Uh, I'm sorry, Voice Studio. Uh, the operating utilities, once again, exercise great caution, but there are a couple of tools. The logs are safe to go into. Obviously, these other things, shutdown system, subscriber import, you would never want to do. But if I wanted to look at the user log, it will show me basically all activity um, that is stored in the system for users. And you know, you can uh, look through there. There's also uh, search functions. If I press S, I can uh, search through this log control up, control down, control top, control bottom, etc. Okay, escape to get out. Um, let's see. Besides operating utilities, port activity is a is a real handy tool for um, technicians. Any activity on the system is uh, shown real time. So if I call into the system, you'll see that I'm calling in there so you can see what's happening. That's what uh, port activity does. Override mode, again, this function is available uh, over the phone, but if you want to switch the phone uh, from the default mode, which means follow the schedule, to a particular mode, such as holiday mode, uh, you can do that, but be careful. you got to make sure you put it back after when the holiday is over. There are also some system reports and uh, some generic site information that uh, can be stored in the system. And then lastly, when you're all done, press L to go back to the status screen. Status screen in itself is also useful. It shows uh, some various information about what's going on in all the ports in the system. Also shows, um, you know, some total counters and um, how much space is available, how many messages are on the system, etc. So again, uh, some useful information. And that's about it. If you have any questions, please contact the Telephone Warehouse Service Department. Thank you.